Hi, everybody. It's Marjorie Waldo at Arts Garage, and today I am lucky to be sitting with Edward J. Stenson III, who is part of the Arts Garage staff and staff family. How are you doing? I am fantastic today. It has been excellent and comfortable so far. Good. No <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. So if, if those of you recognize Edward's face, he's being interviewed today because he's an artist in our exhibit Brave New Vision, which um, is January and February of 2021. So you have uh, the rest of the month of the rest of January mm -hmm. and, the, and all of February to come see the exhibit. There are three artists and Edward is one of them. He's also the artist who painted the um, the art wall in the gallery for our annual campaign, which is a super cool image. Um, and it was a teacher for some time at Village Academy. Indeed. So you've got a, a lot of experience locally and a lot of talent that's so beautiful. And it was a fun thing to poach you. Um, <laughs> village. I didn't mean to take you away from them completely, oh, but sorry. I knew I wanted your in energy here when That's I met nice. you. Um, and so you've been bartending and working in our box office for a little over a year, I think. Absolutely. It was uh, last September. There last was a, September. Um, so so a year been, and a half now. Yeah, a year and a half now. And uh, I don't know, I've been loving it every moment since. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, th the first exposure I had to you was seeing your por portfolio as you showed it to the parents of Village Academy. Yes. And that's <laughs> when I, uh, not only your demeanor and your personality, which shines through in everything that you do, but also the artwork that you exhibited um, to the parents, I was I was moved. So I want to talk about that. You you're Florida born and bred, Absolutely. and your passion in the arts is fantasy. Well, in the arts in general, not just the visual arts, fantasy, sci-fi, and fiction in Absolutely. terms of literature and other things. Why why are those things your favorite? Um, I think that as I've been growing up, I've come to the realization that history itself is fantasy. It is the fantasy that we kind of all are just mutually agreeing on. And so as I grew up, as I saw comics and as I saw movies and literature, all with whole different mythologies and the ability to create gods and laws of reality and whole new races and, and cultures, I saw the power in being able to create fiction, fantasy, sci-fi being able to create new worlds and i just know how eye-opening it was for me and i know that if i can create that glimpse for someone else into a new world that is an extremely awesome experience you know I, so why is it important for us to be able to be transported like that so you know star wars star trek all of those things for i mean batman superman all of the the comics that we watched i'm older and I saw all that stuff in the old fashioned way, not all this high speed uh, uh, technology making uh, the, you know, um, making incredible things happen with computer. I saw it with some artist that's drawn these images, you know? So why are those things so important? Why is it important for us to see into or create mm -hmm. our own? fantasies or worlds, alternate realities? So in, it's kind of like a, a bit of a very complex meta concept, but it kind of goes back to theater in general. It goes back to portraying humanity so that we can learn from each other. Each of us is a trillion different experiences and how else are we gonna learn from each other besides showing those experiences? And so, you know, theater was usually realistic situations, realistic scenarios um, in the past, super powerful explosions and characters was kind of just gods and deities and theater was about reality real situations as we've grown we've told so many stories that now we can explore okay we've told a thousand love stories what else can we change about it? okay the situation that it's in maybe there's a planet about to crash into ours now there's also a love story in it you know maybe there's an, there's an orc horde over there and we only have magic or, and swords and there's a love story in it you know so now we're, we're learning how to throw in different contextual environments into these situations into these important tropes and morals that we still want to teach you know in lord of the rings it's a very classic story but it still has very 
classic concepts. There's a hero, there's a villain, the hero has best friends who teaches him wise things that each part that they teach him, he's a better person now so he can handle and overcome his struggles. He wants to just be lazy, but he needs a good wise friend to tell him, just go on another adventure. You'll learn more. You will be a better person for it. And the world literally is better for it, you know? So I, I believe in heroes, but a quote my dad like created and I instilled in me is heroes aren't made during good times, you know? And stories are about heroes, but the issue is they're not made during good times. So every story has to have a call to action. Every story then has to have the rising action thanks to the, you know, the, the call to action. Very so, interesting. Uh, it's so the whole it's thing there. <laughs> worth remarking on that you and your family have been very involved in the Renaissance Festival. You're not just a visual artist, you act yeah. and you yeah. write <laughs> and you do a lot, of, a lot of different things. So, and the family does. Now your That's father right. is a visual artist as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, he as a hobby does visual arts but primarily he does it and so he's into technology as well and that's the main thing that you know is is his career but he's been loving and practicing art all his life because he's always believed in you know the creative side of the mind versus the more technical just get things done side of the mind so he has always pushed the arts in the household and he he does a lot of ink work and taught me the importance of contrast between ink and white paper and how to create pictures using that. Um, a very technical mind. And then my mom was, I think, kind of more organic because of that. And she had a more creative mind and like she would paint and she would do arts and crafts. You know, um, she's always been into more creative careers, more creative jobs, uh, more helping people jobs versus technical jobs. You know, so but they were both kind of both helping both aspects of the brain. Yeah. I love the technical aspects, but I, I wanted those feelings behind it as well. And your work reflects that. I mean, your work is, it feels organic and yet it feels technical because the <laughs> detail in the, your, your drawings are largely, what we are displaying are largely pencil on paper. Mm -hmm. Some ink as well, I think. Yes, yes. And the detail, it's definitely fantasy based and the detail is extraordinary so some of the pieces are small they're like eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 14 mm -hmm. but i would dare say that you're looking at hours and hours of work in yeah. creating those smaller pieces yes mm -hmm. absolutely i i don't know if it's just a personal stylistic choice but i i love the detail that you can fit on paper you know i there's there's a white piece of paper and then there is completely black and every picture you have ever seen ever is somewhere in between com being completely blank and being completely filled. And so being able to figure out the million different lines that need to exist on your page to render that idea forward, I don't know, it's a powerful feeling to me. And I, I love being able to focus on that and feel that when I'm drawing. It's really, really cool. There was um, a quote in your bio that you submitted to us. And you say that in the work that you've put here on our walls, mm -hmm. that you hope that a view into a world of fantasy evokes the instinctual desire to create your own stories, your own mythologies, your own magics, and your own fantasies. Absolutely. So go back to that concept for me again and tell me why I should be why do I want to create my own fantasies? Why do I want to do that? I understand the hero born of conflict and I understand creating other worlds that go beyond the traditional love story or crime mm -hmm. drama or whatever. So what, what human experience or, yeah, what human experience do I have by being involved in creating my own? And mm -hmm creating your own fantasies and experiencing other people's fantasies, you are experiencing consciousness in all of these different aspects. Like, yes, we're on this reality. Yes, we are able to converse with each other. But when you are really able to create a world, explore in your mind what a world could look like, what a world could be, that is beyond power. 
because we as humans, as conscious agents, have the ability to input that information into the reality that we are all within. If I have a world and then I, have, I, I can show that world, illustrate that world, teach that world, there is, there is a child somewhere who can be inspired by that, see that, realize there is a world similar to something he has always dreamed of. When I saw Lord of the Rings, when I saw Elder Scrolls, when I saw Mass Effect, when I saw God of War, when I saw all these different fantasies, and I imagined how wide consciousness could be and how wide all of our imaginations could be, that experiences a connection like no other. Like being able to create is a power that we have to love more than anything. If something exists, it is because it was in our minds and someone dreamed that it could exist and then made it exist. And although, yes, we were not cybernetic robots yet and we're not superpowered beings, no, but if we can imagine it, I'm, I'm, I'm just going off of humanity's track record. We keep making things exist. So the more we keep creating, the, the more evolved we are as a species. You know, I, I don't expect every person to be the next Einstein, but no, it, one person came up with Lord of the Rings and about a hundred other stories have spawned off of it. Right. One story came out, um, one person came out with Star Wars and there's millions of people who now have completely different ideas of what space could be like. Star Trek, you know, same yeah. exact thing. My mom was a, was a Trekkie, my dad loved Star Wars. And yeah. so one was more about the exploration one was more about the there's so many factors how are they intermingling you know right. so i think answer. i think it's very interesting because i think so i'm a literature lover i was an english teacher first and um books were my very first love theater my second love and every time i read something it informs my current living situation like okay. i think it what you're describing is a huge thing that I'd never really thought of how to put words to that concept mm -hmm. of if you can imagine it, then you, maybe it could exist or inspire, right? Absolutely. That's really cool. I also think in that process of imagining and putting pencil to paper, pen to paper, whether it's writing poetry or doing the visual arts, that you are, you're truly processing what's in your heart and your mind, yes. and then it impacts how you interact on the, uh, it, with the outside world that you currently live in. It's not mm. in your imagination that exists in real time right now. Very yes. cool, very cool. Yes, that is, that is precisely it. You know, the, the concept of rendering, I think is what I love most about inking. Again, everything we've ever seen is between completely blank page, completely filled page, and that concept of being able to render what's in my head and now other people are able to respond to that, I am now affecting these other conscious agents that I know are equally powerful as me. That is a beautiful thing that I know I've now created something that is impacting them. They may smile from, they may create a story from, their minds are now simply more open. Yeah. It, you know, and that, that's just a beautiful connection. To me. Really, are. really cool. And it's really beautiful. I encourage people to stop by and let you make them a drink or come please, to the please. first Friday art walk in February. I know we had our reception in January, but we're going to do it again in yeah. February so that you'll be here as well as the other two artists uh, in this current exhibit. And the community can stop by safely, socially distanced with masks, check out the artwork and talk to you because I change every time I have a conversation with you, Edward. I get a better <laughs> person every time I talk with you. Bless. So I, thank you I'm, for I'm taking so the time to today. Thank and you, for sir. blessing us with your uh, friendship and your talent and um, all of that. I'm very excited that you're on the wall and oh, that people can come see your talent right here, right at Arts Garage. It is an absolute pleasure. I, I love being there. I am. I cannot express how much it means to me to have this opportunity and share the opportunity and share that space with you and with others and with all the viewers who are there as well. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful experience. And thank you. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for today. This was lovely. Thank you as well. It was lovely. Okay. I will talk to you probably this weekend when we're here for other reasons. <laughs> and then um, I'm hoping everybody's going to see this and then want to be here for the first Friday Art Walk or sometime in February. Okay. Thanks, Edward. Thanks, Marjorie.